Hey yo, the keys Andy Lip here, back with another advanced OBS tutorial, and I've been asked quite a few times live on stream about what studio mode is inside of OBS. So today we're going to kind of take a little bit of a deep dive into it, all the different things that you can do inside studio mode, and how to turn it on, etc, etc. But before we get into it, make sure you do like the video, also subscribe, because I've always got loads of tips and tricks that I want to share with you. And come and ask me any questions, either in the comments below, or on my Twitch channel at twitch.tv slash Andy Lip here. Alright, let's get on with the show. Put your rock over the stone. So studio mode is actually available in pretty much every version of OBS and it makes your streams look so much more cleaner. I'm just going to get straight into it and show you exactly what I mean. So jumping down into OBS now, we can see I've added a couple of different scenes. I've added scene 2 and scene 3. Scene 2 is a picture of me as a cowboy. Yeah, if you want to see what that's about, come and visit me at twitch.tv slash and type an exclamation mark cowboy. And scene three, which is a sunset just there. I'm going to just stay on scene two for now. On the right hand side, you can see I've got studio mode just here. Yours might be in a different place because obviously you can move every, every element around in OBS, but you should see it just here. Just press studio mode and you'll get two windows up. This is when people start getting a little bit scared. You've got the preview window and the program window. I'm going to start with the program window. That is basically what your stream can currently see. It's the same as going out of studio mode and having this thing just here. That is exactly what your stream can see. So studio mode, that is what the stream sees. And just to prove that, if I move and resize this, you can see there are no changes happening in the program window just there. So I can make lots of different changes. I could add some extra sources in as well. So for instance, if I just uh, copy this and press the plus sign, I'm gonna add some text in here. I'm gonna type in, I'm a cowboy. Yeah, very professional. Looks beautiful. So I'm going to put, I'm a cowboy. Look at that, I've just memed myself. Beautiful. And if I hit transition just here, it's just going to use whatever default scene transition I've got currently selected just here. So it was just a cut that I've got there. And it's the same if I start messing about in scene three. You can see I can edit on here. I could, um, I could just add other images, other sources into this same preview on this scene. And when I'm ready to send it through to the stream, hit transition, you can see the two have swapped now. I've gone back into the preview window just here. That is a setting. If that doesn't happen to you, it means that you might have a different setting on it. If you press the little cogwheel just here, you've got duplicate scene and swap preview and output so that's if you swap scene it'll kind of swap the two backwards and forwards whenever you transition between them which is quite nice if you want to make an edit to something then send it through and then an edit again send it through it's quite handy but it's all personal preference with that sort of thing and the duplicate scene option is very very handy so i'm just going to transition the cowboy thing back in there and you can see that i can move it around and nothing's changing but if i turn the duplicate scene off you can see the stream can see me editing right now. So it's always handy to kind of put that on. There is also a, a third setting called duplicate sources. This is only really if you want to be changing the properties and different things like that of sources. Most of the time people just want to move things around. So that's not really a setting I use. It can use more... Um, more CPU power uh, and GPU as well depending on what sources you are editing so I'd kind of stay away from using that uh, if possible because really you, you only want to be using resizing and different things like that okay but you can't use duplicate sources with any media sources or even any video capture sources so be a little bit careful so that's pretty much all there is to it. This is your preview window and you can make edits and send it over. So I'm just gonna make this full screen now. And you'll see I've got this little slider bar. This is actually something that we can use to fade in as much as we want, just there. And I know what, you, what you're gonna be thinking, you're gonna be like, oh, but I wanted to um, do different transitions rather than pressing transition and it cut, because that's not very good. If I press the plus sign next to quick transitions, you can see all your different transitions they're all the transitions that you've set up down in the scene transition list. So if you wanted to add another one, you press the plus and you can start editing it just as you add either a stinger, a fade or different things like that. There's loads of Luma wipes. Press the plus, you can change it to fade, however long you want it to be. And if I 
press fade, it'll fade it across just like so. Same if I want to add my Andy Lippy split, and just press Andy Lippy split, and that'll use my transition to send it across. It's the same for pretty much any. You can add as many on there as quick transitions as you want. So you can do movements, you can add pretty much anything on here and use them whenever you like. So it just makes it a little bit easier to kind of manage all your changes and everything like that and make it look very professional whilst editing live. So I would recommend you to start using it. it. People have been really loving it when I've been doing live streams and I've been showing them how I advance my stream and adding different things in with Leora on board and editing in OBS. And this is how I do it. I can send through what, what I'm doing while showing them my edit screen at the same time. It's a very useful tool to have. If you've got any kind of questions or anything like that, please let me know in the comments section below or visit me on Twitch. Make sure you like the video and also subscribe guys. Put your rock over the stone and I'll see you in the next one.